This question involves Newton's second law, Newton's third law and Hooke's law. Pause the video now and read through the question carefully. So now that you've done that, let's have a look through th what's important here. We're told that a truck is going to be towing a car. So we've got two objects. We've got my car and I've got my truck and what's connecting them is a rope and this rope stretches, it acts like a spring so I'm going to draw that in as a spring. This initial diagram here is actually showing the object in its unstretched state to think about it because we're told that the object starts at rest okay so its initial velocity is zero. Now what's going to happen is that this um, unstretched uh, rope here has a particular spring constant so we can think of it as a spring spring constant is 1300 newtons per meter given that information here connecting the car and the truck and we're also told that the car has a mass of 1900 kilograms okay so that's some extra information there 1900 kilograms and we're asked that uh, once the uh, truck pulls on the car, it's starting from rest, how far does the car and the truck move in one minute? So what we want to find out here is some kind of displacement. That's really the, the juxta of the, of the problem here. Um, and we're also given a bit of information here that the car should experience uh, negligible friction. Okay. So what I want to think about here is that uh, this may be the, the unstretched uh, rope and everything's at the velocity equals zero, but once this truck starts to, uh, starts to move across to the right here, so I'm going to assume it's going to travel to the right, then that um, spring quickly becomes uh, stretched. Okay, so it stretches out, it increases its length, and we're told that this stretch state means that um, the rope is stretched by 55 centimeters. Okay, so there's a uh, the rope is stretched by 0.55 of a meter. Now, what does that mean? Well, when you stretch a spring from Hooke's law, that means that you're going to get a force. So, if I think about just my car as the as the object which is important here, because I really want to think about that car, then there's going to be a force acting to the right on that car. In this free body diagram here, I'm going to label that force some kind of applied force, it's applied by the spring, this, this, this rope which is trying to um, uh, compress itself after being stretched and if it's just behaving like a simple spring with Hooke's law we can find the magnitude of that force which is just given by its spring constant times by how far it's stretched. Okay, so that's that 1300 newtons per meter multiplied by 0 0.55 of a meter which gives me 715 newtons. That's the applied force. Are there any other forces which are acting on the car? Well, yes, the car has some mass and it has a normal force, but those two forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, but not action-reaction pairs. Um, and we're also told to assume that there's negligible friction, so there's no other force acting to the left. That's the only force which is, which is acting on the car. So in fact, what that allows us to do is to realize the net force in the x direction, if I take the, take the horizontal direction to be the x direction, is just going to be the applied force. So now using Newton's second law we can write that down as that applied force is the mass times the acceleration in the x direction for the car and from that we can work out what the acceleration is. The acceleration that the car gets is going to be uh, equal to uh, that uh, force which is applied which is that kx divided by um, the mass of the car. Okay. Um, so we can put some numbers in here. We've already evaluated the numerator is 715 newtons. The mass of the car, we were told, is 1,900 kilograms. When you divide newtons by kilograms, you're going to get an acceleration in meters per second squared, so it's unitly correct. And that acceleration in our calculator is 0 0.376 uh, meters per second squared. So we've solved for the acceleration. Why did, why did I, I do that? Well, we wanted to find out how far the car travels. So if it's starting at rest and there's a constant force being applied, once that string has stretched, it's no longer changing its length. It uh, continues to be stretched at 0.55 meters. It applies that force continuously. And therefore, if the force is constant, my acceleration is constant. And I can use my constant acceleration equations of motion. So remembering x minus x naught is equal to v naught t plus a half a t squared. So they're the, the, the concepts that I'm using here. I'm using Newton's uh, second law, f equals ma. And I'm using my solving for a constant acceleration, constant acceleration equations of motion. So 
Finally, let's write down that x minus x naught is equal to v naught t, while its initial velocity was 0 uh, plus um, a half, remember? A half times the acceleration which we evaluated, 0.376 times uh, the time, which is 1 minute. So that's 60 seconds to be unitly correct squared. And if we write that in, we get 677 metres, uh, which we can round off to 680 metres, so it's the same as what the textbook has, um, because of the two significant figures in our uh, initial um, stretching of the spring. We've interpreted here, developing often comes first, but we've evaluated the uh, problem. We should always assess it, okay, does this seem reasonable? Well, okay, back of the book numbers agree. That's what I want to do, actually, is in the assessment, go back and have a think about the truck, okay? Uh, what about the forces which are acting on the truck here? Well, this string, this spring, once again, is stretched, uh, so it's going to also be trying to pull the truck back, um, and it'll pull the truck back with the same force, uh, that 715 uh, newtons. Now, please note these forces are acting um, in opposite directions, and they're equal in magnitude. You might be very tempted to think that they're an action-reaction pair. Uh, if you really wanted these to think of these two as action-reaction pairs, what you could do is eliminate the spring, okay, because the spring's kind of like a third object. And so if I was to draw um, the car touching, okay, in contact with the truck, then, okay, so let's say the, the truck came up behind the car rather than pulled on the car and pushed on the car, okay, then you could say that uh, the, the car truck pushing on the car has the same force um, as the car pushing back on the truck. They're equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Okay. A uh, little aside there, um, but um, uh, one thing you might be thinking of is how come the truck moves to the right uh, if this uh, spring force acting on the truck is acting to the left? Well, it's not the only force acting on the truck. We're asked to assume that there's negligible friction for the car, but of course uh, the truck uh, can uh, experience friction. In fact, that's the, the um, force of, uh, of uh, static friction uh, between the tyres which are rolling along and they're pushing forward um, uh, on the truck. Okay, so if there was no uh, static force of friction between the rolling uh, tyres and the road, then those wheels just spin around and the car, the truck would go nowhere.